All right. I'm going to welcome you to the, uh, the afternoon panel entitled Pedagogical Approaches to Climate Change and Sustainability. My name is Jim Beiser, and uh, I was introduced earlier by Tony Cortese as uh, a troublemaker. I don't know why he would say that. I um, actually uh, maybe am, um, but the title that my boss has given me is a special uh, policy advisor to him and then uh, responsible for strategic advancement of the university. That is a transformation of what it was five years ago to where it should be in 10 years. But actually, uh, in that job, the business card that I would probably most uh, find uh, descriptive of what I do is University Director for Nudge and Nurture, nudging faculty and administrators into a place they're slightly uncomfortable and nurturing them when they feel bad about it. So we have a really interesting panel, and I'm going to uh, just set the stage a little bit. The laptops in front of you, um, the uh, they're there for you to put uh, some of your questions and comments as we go. We're going to spend a few minutes setting the context and then about uh, 15 or so minutes uh, where the panel will answer two questions that we've uh, asked of them. Uh, but before we even start with that, I'm going to um, try and set the stage a little bit. Um, someone once said that the best way to predict the future is to invent it. And at the last... Uh, uh, summit in Washington, D.C., a New York Times reporter came up to my boss, President Michael Crow, from Arizona State University, and um, he, um, he was told, well, you know, if you add up all of the carbon put out by the 4,300 or so colleges and universities around the country, that will only reduce, and you take all that carbon and go to zero, that will only reduce the national output, the United States national output by 3%. So why, does, why, why the big deal? Why is this important? Why is it important that universities are doing this? And uh, so he just looked at her and he said, well, we may only have 3% of the carbon footprint, but we do have 100% of the student footprint. So if we don't believe that universities uh, are inventing the future, uh, that in fact maybe we would like to sit in our universities and believe that the responsibility for the future uh, sits with the politicals, the government people, the uh, industry maybe, um, then, uh, then we need to ask ourselves um, if in fact it is uh, the industry and politicians that got us on, into this mess that we're as universities committing ourselves to help get us out of it, where did they get educated? In our universities, of course. So in this particular topic, this is about uh, the importance of uh, education and sustainability within education. And I talked to Tony Cortese, whose organization that he founded um, is called Second Nature, and, it, and he keeps saying that sustainability needs to be so weaved into everything that we do that it must be second nature. So very briefly at ASU, what we've tried to do is the following. We have about 9,500 uh, new freshmen every year, about uh, another 12,000 transfer students that come from community colleges. So we have uh, close to 22,000 new students every year. Every one of them must take something we call ASU 101. ASU 101 is how do you live at ASU? Three things. Uh, what is it like to be a student at ASU? Innovation is a second theme. And a third theme is sustainability principles. I had started three years ago trying to make it a, a literacy requirement, sustainability. This, is, uh, this was the compromise, but I think a pretty reasonable one. And then we set up an institute and a school of sustainability with degrees. And so how, how do we do it? How do we actually weave it into everything we do? And how do we teach? And how do we organize ourselves in sustainability? And um, just very quickly, what we do is we lay out grand challenges. And we make these challenges that, that, um, that are the kinds of challenges that we as people, not as educators, but as people in, in society. And we're trying to teach our kids to address the grand challenges. And in Arizona, where I'm from, um, you can imagine some of them have to do with water. So let's say our grand challenge is, is uh, as ASU, we want to see to it that Arizona has a sustainable water supply by 2030. And if we're going to do that, then the way we organize ourselves is uh, no one discipline or no one mindset, no one approach, no one technology, no one uh, uh, policy will ever get us there. It must be integrated. And so approaching it, putting everything under that grand challenge, then people tend to work much more closely together rather than apart. 
So that would be my little uh, pitch. I'm going to introduce the panel. And um, first of all, right to my uh, left here is Tim Brenneman. Um, he's the president of uh, Goshen College. He's also a charter uh, signatory of the president's climate commitment. Um, right here in uh, Goshen, Indiana, about a thousand students. He's the 16th president to serve at the college, and um, he's a, a graduate, in fact, of, of Goshen. He pursued an interdisciplinary degree there, combining Bible, biology, and natural science, which I think is really cool. Um, as uh, an educator, biblical theologian, and church leader, uh, Dr. Brenneman has chosen to align his vocation with the work of serving the church. In fact, I was looking on his website, and if you guys take a look at that, Gerald uh, Riker, is that how you pronounce his name? A new faculty member has this class called Management Policy and Social Responsibility, and it's for graduating seniors, and we're there, they will um, work with a commercial trucking company to look at the economic and environmental impacts of uh, investing in, in wind farms. And it's just very interesting. Um, to Jim's left is Mary Spangler, Chancellor of Houston uh, Community College. Uh, she's the seventh chancellor of that uh, 55,000 student uh, community college. I think it's the largest in Texas, is that right? Pretty, okay, all right, second. Um, and uh, she's um, reorganized a senior administration to increase efficiency, reduce costs, move more resources to the, the six campuses. Um, her professional career, career has been devoted to community colleges and their students, and she's worked for 17 years in higher education administration. I went on the web, and I, I just, the long, long, long list of awards and uh, positions that she's held in, na in national associations throughout uh, the country. Um, is, is really pretty amazing. Mitch Tomaschow, uh, president of Unity College, uh, he's devoted his professional career to advancing ecological literacy and sustainability education. Um, Unity College strives to be a, a hands-on, real-world-based, sustainable, comprehensive environmental studies college. He is interested in continued development of reflective interdisciplinary pedagogy and uh, which, that addresses climate change and sustainability. And uh, he just revealed to me that he had a pretty interesting thing to share with you. So with that, um, we will, let me tell you about the questions that we, uh, we asked them and then we'll look to the panel to see uh, what might be um, the way they'd like to approach it. So the two questions, what is your institution doing to address climate change and sustainability in its educational offerings? And what challenges have you faced in the process of attempting this educational orientation, and how have you dealt with these challenges? So now remember, as uh, we go through this session, you're going to want to be in front of the computer. So if, um, let's let's hope that uh, that someone has taken that uh, responsibility on. Joe, are you going to type again? All right. Um, and what you're going to do is, uh, as you uh, think of questions or think of comments, just go ahead and type them in. Be sure you hit submit after every one of them. This will be then uh, captured over here uh, on the theme team. Um, and um, and um, Stephen Muzzy is our theme leader. All right. Uh, and so w they'll capture it, and it'll be fed back to us after this. How the technology works is new for me, but uh, it worked this last session, so I'm Let's uh, let's just go. So, would you like to? Okay. <clears throat> Unless your institution was formed or established as a green institution in its origin, mission, vision, and mandate, greening the curriculum, as you can, to borrow a phrase, you can imagine maybe one of the most difficult challenges facing higher education because of entrenched commitments to silo systems of academia, definitions of intellectual competencies, vulnerabilities that interdisciplinary studies seem to foment. Well, for example, I have a PhD in ancient Near Eastern studies. What do I know about environmental studies or uh, sustainability questions might be one of those vulnerabilities or those feelings. Uh, so what has to happen, at least our experience has been, is a campus cultural transformation. And for us, it's been, we've reached sort of, sort of a, a wonderful tipping point. Some of it has been uh, a, a, a series of things that have happened to us over the last 25 years. And then actually this presidential commitment offers a sort of tipping point, a climate to act 
much more decisively, and it's been a privilege to, uh, to be part of that. Uh, in 1980, we were given a large tract of property, the, the largest private land reserve in the state of Indiana, 1,150 acres, just about 30 miles south of the campus. And I, I put, uh, scattered some brochures around. Uh, the Mary Lee Environmental Center, it, it, we now, ever since that point, uh, we began to... Um, to teach K through 12, have K through 12 programs, we have six to seven thousand young people who come through that uh, center from three area counties around about that uh, to learn about sustainability, about creation care, about land preservation, and on and on. And out of that uh, grew. Um, masters and uh, majors and minors in um, environmental science. Uh, uh, In addition, um, uh, we we just started our new master's program, I should say, in environmental education as well, growing out of that uh, since my coming on as president. Um, What I would say, so that was sort of that that sort sort of uh, provided an impetus for uh, us as a campus to begin thinking in many new ways about uh, sustainability questions. Uh, it turns out that one has to make in order to really uh, create the climate to change your gen ed programs, one has to make a, a very strong argument across the board so that it's just not stuck in an environmental science area in which the you know the hardcore biologists tend to uh, if you have an institution like ours that graduates 95 to 100 percent of our pre-med students that go on to med school you know it, uh, talking about environmental science uh, you know there was quite a bit of friction for uh, uh, quite a few years around whether we should be doing that whether that's the true hard science or not those kind of questions um, so one has to begin to persuade across the board if one wants to uh, transform a curriculum. And by doing that, you look for, I, I would look for historical precedent to, be, to begin to create precedents uh, w- with regard to our core values, deliberations, or mission statements. Boards have to be, uh, in terms of boards who help guide us in our strategic planning. And all in every single one of those levels, uh, you know, we, we Created new core values. Uh, uh, our strategic plan incorporated the language of sustainability. Um, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I think one of you will also say a little more about uh, working with boards. But let me just say um, what we did then, it established an uh, ecological stewardship committee now that oversees uh, all uh, areas of the uh, campus. Um, and for many years now, we have been looking at uh, how we save, uh, how we save um, through um, through develop. Uh, excuse me, um, I'm trying to speed up here. In our physical plant, our landscape master plan, all of these areas, we're looking for ways of uh, sustain uh, sustainability, carbon neutrality, uh, and creating new courses that are cross-discipline, that's been happening. And what has happened now is there's a convergence of many things in such such that uh, we're now being attractive more and more to faculty. We're a small college in Indiana, and and we're getting faculty from the UC systems and other places who are tenured faculty who are coming to our small campus because they see a convergence, a a transformation happening. to the extent that we're now about to undertake, we tried to undertake over the course of the years twice, gen ed curriculum uh, uh, transformations, and never quite w- was able to in, to change the gen ed program that would uh, filtrate across the institution. We're undertaking that again in the coming year, and um, there will be a, a sort of a total transformation that has a meta story so that, not unlike Arizona, a a student who comes in will know that international education, sustainability, environmental questions uh, will be a part of who they become as they enter our institution. And when they leave in their senior projects and programs, um, they will have to integrate that into whatever discipline that they are a part of. Um, That's it in a nutshell. I can elaborate much more uh, fully, perhaps during the question and answer time. Thanks, Jill. Thank you. Um, 
I want to preface my comments by saying that this comes from the perspective of the CEO of the institution. As a chancellor, um, I'm not able to impact really what happens in the classroom. But uh, having spent many years in the classroom, I think I approach the leadership of the colleges that I have been at from that perspective of, of how do I help people to learn about their responsibilities and their roles. Interestingly, uh, Larry Eisenberg and I uh, were at LA uh, CCD together and I was there at the front end of that program that he talked about. I'm very impressed to hear how it has changed. Um, it is about the leadership, I think, at the senior level that you have to focus attention if you if you intend to have scale. So what happens in the classrooms, what happens at the discipline level is critical, but it won't get things up to where you will try to impact, let's say, a region if if you do not have the leadership or the commitment of the president and the board uh, with you. And so uh, when I came to Houston, and I've only been there about 15 months at this point, my assessment was that the college was doing a lot of good things, but there was no alignment there was no sense of sort of a shared vision of where are we going, what are we doing. And in listening, I, I, I tried to listen carefully to what I heard, and the board, one of the comments that the board had made was, well, we weren't, we're not involved, we don't know what's happening, we're not part of the strategic plan. And so, so I took that as the starting point to engage them in how important alignment and strategy are in getting to where we, we are going to go. We worked with them to develop a vision to be the most relevant community college, to provide opportunity for every student, and to be essential to our communities. And I think in so many ways that's really the message of sustainability and of, of being thoughtful about the kinds of students, citizens we are educating. So the, our strategic plan, you can go on our website to see, uh, we, one of our six goals is resource development and enhancement and another is a global perspective. Um, our outcomes include, and I'm just going to read you the, the two that are relevant, helping students succeed through innovative methods of course delivery and teaching practices. That, that says what we want to achieve. And exhibiting healthy behaviors that promote sustainable advantage and value for the community at large. I think in many ways saying those things lays down the opportunity to come back to them later and then to begin to hold faculty accountable for what is it that you are doing with regard to um, what the central office, you know, those folks down there who make all the decisions that nobody ever really, they, never, they don't understand what we're doing on the campuses. What, what is our commitment at the central office to advancing this global perspective? Implement the standards and guidelines of the American College and University President's Climate Commitment. I knew as we developed this strategic plan that it had to be there so that I could come back later and be accountable for it. If you, if you don't have that kind of support, I believe, at the, at the uppermost layers and with the board, it is much harder to, to get traction. Um, that then enables you, I think, to do the kinds of things that are more innovative, and I'll just name them for you. you if you want to ask questions about them afterwards, I'll be happy to do that. We have just begun a, a new program in partnership with the City of Houston and the, climate, uh, the Clinton Climate Initiative for a uh, green building institute at the college. So students will be able to get certified and uh, get, uh, we're, we'll work probably towards an AA degree in residential building performance technology. Uh, that will help the mayor achieve the retrofit of the buildings that you heard Jonathan talk about a little bit, I think it was Jonathan, talk about a little bit earlier. Uh, we have a solar energy initiative. I found out that, that um, Texas is the wind capital of the country, right? I, who knew that? I thought it was Palm Springs. 
Um, uh, we also have some very old buildings that we inherited, and uh, the design, interior design department is looking at how can the students look at this from the perspective of innovating and retrofitting the building. And then the last point I'll make, and I will turn the microphone over, is not to overlook the form and function issue of how a building can actually be a learning environment in a uh, a public safety institute at Oakland Community College when I was the chancellor there in Michigan. Um, we, had, we had a Crest site, which was a 16-acre uh, combined uh, emergency resource uh, training center where the students learned how to respond to emergencies in a, a mock town. And well, there was one other one that I wanted to mention. And, oh, that was the, this is the other one. We're probably one of three community colleges in the country that has pulled all of our health science uh, programs, there are 27 of them, together in a single building, which enables the students to have cross-disciplinary experiences, and it's right across the street from the Texas Medical Center, which is the largest medical center in the world. So taking advantage of the opportunities of the environment where you are and uh, thinking about how we can align those efforts in support of an initiative, I think, is what, from a perspective of a leader, I can provide that kind of support that's necessary. So if you are not in that position yourself, Working with the person who can make those decisions is something that I would certainly encourage. And it does begin with the board and their uh, understanding of their responsibility. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Mitch? Um, I come from a, a totally different uh, background. I was one, I'm from the, a child of the interdisciplinary 60s. In 1969, I saw the Whole Earth Catalog on the shelves of the 8th Street Bookstore, and I took it down, and I said, wow, that's the greatest thing imaginable. I want to live my life that way, and that's what I want to do. So I've had a career in environmental studies. I've lived and breathed it. For 30 years, I was at Antioch, New England, where I founded pro master's and PhD programs. I wrote a book in 1995 called Ecological Identity, uh, which is about when a person chooses an environmental way of life, what does that mean? And in 2001, I wrote a book called Bringing the Biosphere Home about interpreting global environmental change. I never thought I'd be a college president, but a search firm came knocking on my door about two, year, two and a half years ago and, uh, at a place called Unity College. And um, I thought, wow, what an extraordinary opportunity to look at an entire institution. And even though it's an environmental college, I'm hoping that some of the things that we're trying to do may be of use for you. What an extraordinary opportunity to take an entire college and move it in a specific type of direction. And part of the challenge was it's a really a turnaround challenge as well. So I have banked everything on a kind of urgency around sustainability, climate change, and biodiversity as a way for the college to really identify itself, create a national and regional voice, and move itself forward, not only academically, but in terms of philanthropy. So I have a lot at stake. Um, not, several months ago, I saw Michael Crow do an extraordinary uh, presentation on if you could start a college from scratch. Given what we know now about climate change and biodiversity, what would you do and how would you do it? So I wrote a blog essay called Climate Change and the Future of Higher Education, and I posed the challenge to the entire campus. What if we could start from scratch, and why can't we? What would we do? Well, I'm not going to go into all the details because they're, they're emerging as we speak. We, have, we just generated a master plan called Unity 2020, but I want to talk about five things in the interest of time, which are really the, the emphases, the focus, and, the, and, and hopefully they'll be of some of use and help. The first thing that we've, I've, I'd like to do, and this is really hard, because even in an environmental college, there are some really recalcitrant people who want to do the same thing the way they've always done it, but I, I have really, I'm really urging an overhaul of the entire curriculum. We are reorganizing the curriculum so we have five centers, a Center for Biodiversity and Landscape Ecology, a Center for Sustainability and Global Change, a Center for Conservation Law and Policy, a Center for Environment and the, hum uh, and the Humanities, um, and another one on environmental and ed adventure education. Those are our strengths. Those are the things that we're good at. It gives us a focus. It gives us a targets of excellence. And also, we're really focusing on the first-year experience. So every student who comes into the school immediately gets 
uh, instruction, hands-on activity, and understanding of sustainability, climate change, and biodiversity. The second, so this overhaul will be important. It'll be interesting. We're really going to focus on the first year experience as well, so we could really motivate our students to, you know, see what's valuable in having an entire career that's oriented this way. And whenever I recruit, whenever I talk about the college, I talk about the importance of this career, how badly we need people to go into this career, period. It's the greatest opportunity of, of, of their lifetime to go into a career such as this one. The second thing that's really crucial is that our campus has to reflect our values. And we have a long way to go. We're making a lot of progress. But I see a college campus as the ultimate living and learning laboratory for an entire community. And our college needs to be that as well. So I see the, the campus as an experiment. Let's try as many different approaches to energy as we can. Let's try as many different approaches to growing food as we can. Let's try as many different approaches to using green cleaning materials as we can. But with everything that we do, it's not only important that we you know, follow all these wonderful new guidelines and approaches and possibilities, but I'm really stressing the interpretive angle. I have been into so many LEED certified buildings, you wouldn't even know they were LEED certified because there's no signage. So I want someone to visit our campus and immediately look at the place and say, wow, I understand what this is all about now. It's, it's, it, it will be an educational experience every time you set foot in our campus. So we're going to get all kinds of students and faculty involved with doing interpretive signage and setting up all these really interesting things on campus so that you always know where you are and what you're looking at and you're always thinking about this place as a place in nature. And that's, that's a charge for the entire campus. Um, a third thing that we're really focusing on is um, the whole challenge of, um, of infrastructure. And um, I, have, I have changed all the, we've tried to change all the job descriptions so that every single person who works on, on campus has um, sustainability initiatives written into their job description. And to, to me, this is, this is a fundamental educational opportunity. It's the best way for everyone to learn. And when, during the last, last convocation, for example, we had a panel on sustainability, and I had staff, I had the supervisor of the janitors work with the faculty because he is so excited about the green cleaning materials that he's using. Um, we're, we're, doing, we're working with dining services where students work with dining services stand, uh, staff to actually do interpretive signage in the cafeteria. There are so many of these things that can be done. It's just a matter of imagination and discipline and, and proving to people that, you know, this is possible and it's exciting. And guess what? It retains students as well. Um, the, the fourth emphasis that's really important for us is um, I feel that in my role, you know, I mean, those of you who are college presidents know this all the time. You always have to remind people of who they are and what they're doing and why they're doing it. And, you know, people are always going to question it and say, well, we've, we've never done it that way or, or we've been doing it this way for 20 or 30 years. But the fact is, even an environmental curriculum that was designed 20 or 30 years ago isn't relevant anymore. I mean, the word biodiversity was coined in 1986. You know, and all this, the climate change phenomenon, although we know about the Keeling curves for quite some time, it's really only about 10, 5 years it's even been part of public awareness. The field moves that quickly. And any interesting and exciting college has to move as quickly. So I'm trying to constantly remind people of, you know, why are you here? Who are you serving? What's the point of even having a college, for goodness sakes? So these are, I guess in the interest of time, I'll stop. But what I'm trying to do is also bring a blend of enthusiasm and exuberance. I am teaching freshmen next year. I'm teaching a course called The Future of Life on Earth. I want to work with them right away. I want to teach them basic principles of sustainability, climate change, and biodiversity. The course will be an integration of science and the humanities. I'm co-teaching it with, um, with a writer. And I want to send a message also to faculty that everyone should be working with freshmen. Because it's at that point in the educational cycle that we can engage them in the deep curiosity of learning about the planet and protecting the planet. So that's all for now. Well, thank you very much. What a great panel. Um, I just wish my president had been here to hear it. Um, the, um, that's why they call me troublemaker. Um, so here now comes some fun part for you. You, get, you uh, uh, look at your numbers. You, your, uh, we're going to put some questions up there. Take a look at these two questions, uh, and we're going to ask each of the table to discuss them them, among themselves. And if you uh, are at an odd number table, you're going to focus on question number one. But you, if you have time and the inclination, go to question number two. If you're at even, of course, you would question, uh, focus on question number two. And then if you have the time, you go back to uh, question number one. And these are, and I'll read them for you in case you can't read them in the back. Uh, question number one, success. What would a successful climate neutrality and sustainability education pedagogy for all students look like? 
and you, you got to do that in only 25 minutes. Um, and strategy, how can you engage your administration, faculty, staff, and students in developing strategies to orient teaching to address climate change and sustainability? So um, when you, uh, as someone uh, should take notes uh, on that uh, laptop that's there, um, keep hitting submit every once in a while so that you can uh, make sure that the people over here are getting it, they're compiling the information at the end of 25, 30 minutes. We're going we're gonna to come back and we're, and we're going to take and try and combine some of the questions that you had in some main themes and put them back up and we'll address them with the panel again. Uh, the panelists will be walking around, maybe sitting with you at, at, at a table. You get a chance to ha um, ask some questions of them specifically. Then we'll come back for the, the uh, last uh, 20 minutes or so and, uh, and, and address all of those things. So have at it. <laughs>